Tonight, the fraudsters helping bogus students rip off student loans. They're targeting private colleges backed by the government to open up higher education to all. For a cut of the student's loan or cash, fraudsters can fix everything. Of course, you will have business management. For four years, you will get so much money every year. From 11 to 11. They'll even help fake your coursework. We have eight core writers who write for him. But he has over 40 writers that he can call at any time. At a time when student debt has topped 100 billion pounds, we reveal how student loan scams are costing us all millions. From the evidence you've shown me, there's clear fraud going on and it needs to be referred to the police. It's a proud day in many people's lives, graduating from university. The government is keen to help more of us experience this. It's backing private colleges called alternative providers to offer degrees and diplomas to people who might otherwise not have the chance to get a higher education. Widening participation is hugely, hugely important. It's good that more young people are able to access higher education, and particularly young people from disadvantaged backgrounds. In England, Wales and Northern Ireland, these private colleges like universities are paid for by taxpayer-funded student loans. Students at private colleges can get up to £17,000 a year, 11 to cover living expenses and 6 to cover tuition fees. It's estimated that three quarters of graduates may never pay back their student loans in full. There are 112 private colleges, and as they enrol more and more students, that's leaving them vulnerable to fraud. Over £400 million a year is going in to support alternative higher education providers, so it's vital we keep track that that money is being spent as it should be. Our investigation starts in Greenwich, London, at the Greenwich School of Management, or GSM. It's expanded over the last six years and now has more than 4,000 students. A whistleblower has told us that an agent who recruits for GSM on college premises is enrolling bogus students who are only interested in the money. His name is Charles Logan. We send in two undercover students. Charles might be on the line with first floor. Charles, yeah? yeah. Well, both sure enough, we find him upstairs, behind a desk near the library. Yeah. Do you have a Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Our undercover student has one BTEC, the equivalent of A-levels, enough to get him a place. Yeah. Within minutes, Logan gives him an application form for a three-year honours degree course in business management. Will this interfere with my work? Trust me, it won't. Take that off. Where are you from? Our undercover student says he's working full time. Logan tells him a student loan can be a nice little earner on top. There's a guy who says he has never been to a class. Never done an assignment in his life. But own, but use the money to own to, to go from to a start. He's graduated with the good honors for the law degree last year. Never let it go. Where do you start here? Yeah, but here. Circle, back. Logan, who has a contract with the college, fills in our undercover student's loan application. His admission onto the course will be processed by GSM. Most GSM students are recruited by the college itself. 
The rest come from freelance recruiters. We've been told by a whistleblower that Logan is GSM's number one recruiter. He gets a commission of around £600 for every student he enrols. The college gets £6,000 in tuition fees per student per year. More students, more money. Yeah. The cost will be £18,000 if you're doing a free year course, OK? And our bogus student, what does he get? £5,300 a year to cover his living expenses, although some students get around 11000 It's all paid for by the government's student loans company, taxpayers' money. We showed our footage to Lord Storey, a former head teacher who's raised concerns about private colleges. The agent gets paid money for each person he recruits, so it's in his interest to sell the wares. The college gets substantial public money, the student gets student loan money, and the government can say, tick in the box, we've got people who are hard to reach, you know, disadvantaged people doing higher education. We'll find out later how our undercover student gets on. Our next dodgy recruiter is based in East London. Amir Raja runs Unique Consulting London Limited from this office in Barking. We've heard he makes money recruiting bogus students interested in getting loans they'll probably never pay back. <laughs> This time, our undercover student, who we send in with a friend, says she left school at 16 in India with the equivalent of GCSEs. Raja says there are courses she can apply for. Course of business management. Four years ke liye itne hi paise aapko har saal milenge, even 11 to 11 and a half. Roger says she'll need to show some professional experience. But she's already told him that she's been working cash in hand in a beauty salon. Not a problem. Roger takes a red pen to her CV. Job title there, they're marketing executive. Ye jana, ye wali jana, ye card there. ठीक है यहाँ ये भी शिकार आप सितंबर 2014 से कर सकती हैं सितंबर 2014 से अप टू डेट कर दें इसको मार्केटिंग एक्सेक्टिव की जॉब डिस्क्रिप्शन जाना वो सर्च करें गूगल में कि वो उसकी जॉब क्या होती है वो क्या करता है मार्केट में जाना होता है कुछ सेल्स फिगर लेने होते हैं और इस तरह की जान डिफरेंट वो होती ह� and to help with this deception, he writes a fake reference letter, saying she's been employed by his company as a marketing executive for several years. He says it was sent with her application to the central London campus of Roehampton University, which is run by a private company called QA Higher Education. Later, after an interview at which Roehampton says she did very well, and a basic English test, she's accepted. Roger's fee for helping our undercover student cheat her way onto a degree course and apply for a loan, 200 pounds paid in cash. If I were Roehampton University, I would be very concerned about the impact that would have on my credibility as a, a university. We boast that we have the best university sector in the world, but if these practices are going on where people are admitted to courses with false paperwork, fraudulent paperwork, that undermines our university sector. We withdrew our undercover student from the course before her loan application process was completed. Roehampton University says it's disappointed an agent may have acted inappropriately. It says partnerships are continually audited and reviewed, and if procedures are not followed, 
it takes immediate and appropriate action. QA Higher Education says it suspended this agent pending an investigation. Roger's company, Unique Consulting, denies any wrongdoing. They say a professional reference letter was sent in error and that management policies have been reviewed. Back at the Greenwich School of Management, our undercover student has degree level assignments to do. Together with a friend, he pays Charles Logan another visit. Okay. Um, I'm Charles. Yeah. My book has you can do Logan knows just the man to help our undercover student with his coursework. How much is the person? He has eight core writers who write for him, but he has over 40 writers that he can call at any time. He's a professional person, mm -hmm. and what he has, what he does, he does things in a way where he, legally speaking, nothing comes back to him, right? And he doesn't do plagiarism. So it's written like oh, from scratch. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Logan, the Mr. Fix-It for bogus students, tells us how it works. And he gives it to you as a template, so therefore, not as an assignment. Um, yes, sir. So therefore, nobody can say, oh, you actually did, 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 you know, did, did, he did the work for you. So it's he template. Gave it a template. He almost makes it sound legit. You can change it if you want, right, um, if you're not happy. But then his work usually is distinction, the merit distinction work. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and I tested it with five people last semester. Five. Trust me. And they, they didn't complain. And they would complain because yeah. they made the women. Hello? <laughs> Logan gives us the number for his talented friend. He's called Mike and runs a company called Grammaholic. We give him a call. Hello, good morning. Hi, is that Mike? Hi, my name's um, I was giving a number by, you know, Charles at GSM. Okay. Yeah, whatever you need help with, you just need to send me an email and I'll look at it. So send the requirements of what you need help with. We ordered two assignments from Mike and another online. Here they are. Mike's look impressive. One costs £356, the other £170. I'm completely and utterly shocked and really, really disappointed that these people are exploiting students. It, it totally delegitimizes the hard work that students across the country do on a day-to-day -day basis to work hard for their degrees. There's something like 50,000 uh, students are, are cheating by using essay mills to write their essays for you. These companies should be made illegal. They should be banned in your view? They should be banned. Grammaholics say they're a small team offering writing and IT services and do not condone academic fraud. They only provide sample study guides as academic research assistants and their terms and conditions say students should not submit writers' work as their own, although they've heard that some do. Later, GSM passed our undercover student with flying colours, without him doing a stroke of work. How's the first semester? Oh, went well. We tell Charles Logan the good news. And he got these marks. No, no, no. And that he must work to get it, give it a thing like that. GSM says if the allegations against Charles Logan are true, his actions are totally unacceptable. It suspended its contract with him and brought in external experts to investigate. It says if its systems have been open to abuse, it'll take all appropriate steps to strengthen them. Logan himself says he emphatically denies acting fraudulently, either for profit or to assist students in fraudulently claiming student finance. Most private colleges don't award their own degrees, so work in partnership with the universities. 
GSM pays Plymouth University to approve its students' coursework and ratify their final marks. Plymouth University confirmed our undercover students' marks and didn't detect he cheated. If they're going to license out their degree awarding status, they need to be very, very careful. And I think this will send warning signals right round the university sector to make sure that they're really getting in there, as well as government regulation, and looking at the quality of work. Plymouth University says GSM is responsible for student admissions and attendance and is launching its own full and independent investigation. It says it has long-standing and robust academic regulations and processes to prevent academic dishonesty and ensure the quality of its degrees. A barber shop in Ilford, East London. The unlikely starting point for our final investigation into student loan fraudsters. The man who runs the shop is called Imran, and we've been told he's up to his neck in fraud. Our undercover student meets him in his Mercedes. He offers to get us a college place on a two-year higher national diploma or HND course, but it'll cost. But Imran has lots more to offer. As well as guaranteeing admission for £200, he says that once we're in, he can fake our attendance and supply all the academic assignments we need. The cost, £1,500 a year, paid out of our student loan money. So how does Imran do it? This is Grafton College on Oxford Street. It's fully approved by the government for student loans and has just started offering degrees in partnership with the Open University. We decide to test Imran's claims using two undercover students. One says she's working cash in hand. She's keen to get some student loan money. He says he'll meet us at the college. When we get there, we find he sent his assistant, Raza, instead. We tell him our student left school at 16, so doesn't have the qualifications to get on the course. One solution is to make our undercover student look like she's got more qualifications than she actually has. Imran and Raza will get her a certificate saying she has the equivalent of A-levels and that will earn them even more money. So £600 for a dodgy certificate. Will we get away with it? With the agent's promise of a real certificate 
fraudulently made out in our undercover student's name. A member of college staff later fills out her loan application. He seems to know the agents. Still in the college, our undercover students pay Raza a £300 deposit for the dodgy certificate. Total 300. Okay, so I'm giving you 300. A few days later, we pay the remaining £300 to his boss, the man with the Merc, Imran. It's now day one of our undercover students' HND in business management. Grafton College teaches courses supplied by Pearson, one of the world's biggest education companies. Very welcome to Grafton College. The name of your course is BTEC, HND Business Level 5. HND stands for Higher National Diploma. The awarding body which will give you this diploma, the name of that awarding is Pearson. Okay? So Pearson is the awarding body, is the examining body. When we Our undercover the and her fellow students are told they must attend lectures. If you do not have 80% of attendance, we cannot confirm your attendance to student loans company. That means until we confirm, you do not get the money. The dodgy recruiters have a solution for that too. They're downstairs. Imran says he'll fix it so she barely has to attend. After attending just one lecture, our undercover student gets paid £3,600, the first instalment of her annual maintenance loan to cover living expenses of £11,000 a year. And two weeks later, Grafton College is paid the first £1,500 instalment of its £6,000 a year tuition fee. Time to pay dodgy recruiter Imran, who made it all happen. We're back in his Mercedes. A nice little earner at the taxpayer's expense. In total, we paid Imran £2,300, leaving our undercover student with £8,700 from her £11,000 maintenance loan. And with a shiny new certificate, it all looks legit. <laughs> the logo on the certificate says AVA. That's now the British Awarding Association, a government-approved company based, wait for it, on the floor above Grafton College. Imran says he got it from Asif Khawaja, Grafton's head of operations. Here they are together at the college earlier. Like all his claims about inside help, we don't know if he's telling the truth. But if he is, it's shocking. It looks like a genuine certificate. In fact, it is a genuine it, certificate. No, it is a genuine certificate, but that a genuine certificate has been arrived at by massive cheating and falsifying information. And it's, it's, it's wrong, absolutely wrong. We now know that Asif Khawaja's brother, Sarwa, co-owns the British Awarding Association, where the certificate apparently came from, with the wife of Grafton College's director, when we asked them about it, they all said they were unaware of any alleged fraudulent activities taking place and that family relationships can't be used to somehow implicate them in alleged fraud. Asif Khawaja says he absolutely denies any involvement. 
The college says, though Raza and Imran are on its premises from time to time, they aren't authorized to act as agents. As for the agents, how much do they get from their student loan scams? Imran says he's been doing it for years at several colleges, and many of his clients are restaurant workers and taxi drivers. Well, preferably, I'm lost for words. I mean, these are corrupt educational practices. Uh, they've falsified information. They've broken the law. They've. It, it is. It is just mind blowing. I, I, I'm. I'm lost for words. Quite honestly. It seems to me pretty apparent there is criminal fraud going on. From what you've shown me, it needs to be referred to the police. Neither Raza nor Imran have responded to our allegations. Pearson says it's put an immediate block on Grafton College, which means it'll not be able to register or certificate any further students for Pearson qualifications until its investigations are complete. The Open University says it's seeking urgent clarification from Grafton College, and any partnership found not to be meeting its expectations on standards and behavior would be ended with immediate effect. The sector expanded fast and the government didn't set up a, a regulatory system that was fit for purpose. It's got to crack down on what's happened now, really investigate it and send in the auditors, but it's also got to have a system that stops these chances piling in and making money from the taxpayer. The government's regulator, the Quality Assurance Agency, was concerned about student admissions at Grafton two years ago. But this summer, at the same time we were investigating, they said Grafton was improving. But you went in in June 2017, you said the college is making acceptable progress. How on earth can that be true? What we're responsible for is for assessing the quality of the education. So you're not worried about fraud? I, I'm just not, let me be absolutely clear about this. Fraud of any kind is absolutely unacceptable and we have the tools to investigate fraud. On several other occasions over the last few years, we have investigated colleges and sometimes in partnership with other organisations. The Department for Education says there's been a significant drop in the amount of money paid to ineligible students over the last four years. But at a time when student debt has topped £100 billion, pounds, our investigation shows how the student loan system is still wide open to fraud. The funding system is ultimately broken. These are horrible people that are exploiting our education system. I think that the government needs to have more rigorous regulations to ensure that they are delivering quality teaching and learning. During this investigation, we received nearly £9,000 in student loans we weren't entitled to, all at the taxpayer's expense. Unlike the fraudsters we've uncovered, we will, of course, pay it back.